Hi, my name is Melody Gilbert and I'm the director of Judy's Thoughts and it's a short documentary that's based on this tape. It was created from this tape um, that my mom left behind in 1981 and it took me 39 years to listen to it. Um, I was a little too afraid of the emotions it might make me feel um, because it was made during the last three weeks of her life as she was dying. So uh, the film is using just her audio and the images that I saw when I heard her voice and it was a very very emotional experience for me this is my mom Judy Lee Gilbert um, just to hear her voice to start and uh, after I started listening to her voice and I could absorb that I started listening to what she was saying and what she was saying was incredibly powerful it's like a secret path to a world we don't really talk about um, and she was honest and open and the film is very heartbreaking but also very beautiful um, very intimate shockingly intimate in certain parts so um, and the sort of takes you through all the phases um, that you would go through like hope and fear and um, uh, you know dreams and then ultimately acceptance letting go and acceptance and she takes us on this journey so it becomes a universal journey that we don't really usually talk about and um, so it was a really emotional thing for me to go through after holding on to this mm. tape for 40 almost 40 years and I'm just grateful that it's done and I get to share it with people now. Not only how cathartic has this process been for you, how cathartic do you think the making of that tape was for her? Amazing that you ask that because I I believe that th this is 1981. There were no cell phones where you would record yourself like people do today. You know, everybody today is recording everything, and um, I think that she used this tape. It was very private. She would just press record and start talking um, about what was going on with her. I think it was in a way like her therapy. Like there was no th people didn't do therapy back then. You know, I mean, maybe some people, not the way it is today. But this was her way of sort of coping um, with that time period that she was going through. And I showed um, the film and played the audio for her best friend, who's mentioned in the film. And she even said, I didn't know that about your mom. I didn't know that she was going through those things because she wanted to be hopeful. And everybody was trying to be hopeful the whole time. But this was really really what was going on with her and um, and then she told me later that like during the last couple days of her life they did talk this way but when she was doing this you're 100% right this was her therapy I am sure when you finally sat down and listened to it can you tell us just where and how you did it did you sit at a table I mean this must have been a big moment. Yeah, it was, it was, well, you know what? The pandemic took a lot out of all of us, right? In different ways. And I, at that point, I also had other parents that got sick and one even passed away. This is all during the pandemic. So at that point, I was in so much pain that I figured this is, if I don't listen to it now, I'll never listen to it. And that's what happened. I just, found, I had to find a cassette recorder, which wasn't easy, <laughs> believe it or not. I live in Natchitoches, Louisiana now. Um, and I teach at a university there, and I couldn't even find an old cassette tape that worked. I mean, a cassette player that worked. So I eventually found one, but it was very um, whiny. The tape was whiny, like it was like, oh, so I had to get it transferred into a file. And when I finally got that file back, I sat down with my husband, I held his hand, and I was just, it was, it was so shocking to hear her voice after that long. You know, it's very different. Pictures are very different and home movies are even different because some of us are old enough that a lot of the home movies don't have audio <laughs> um, but this was hearing her voice for the first time in so long and I didn't even recognize her voice in a way like I knew it was her but I like had to really 
listen like I don't remember her voice like that like oh but then I did remember her voice like that it was just so shocking and then I played it again and then I played it again and then each time I played it I got something different out of it and then um, my daughter our daughter came to visit she's um, 30 at the time I think she came to visit us and I played it for her holding her hand because she never got to meet her grandma Judy I mean it's just been so emotional the whole thing has just been um, painful and beautiful and has I guess what I realize now is I never really grieved her mm-hmm. until now like this is my version of grief everybody has their own and I think anyone who's lost someone they love will relate to this film because it may be what you know that person you loved went through that but you they just never told you and so um, the people who are watching it now I feel like are really connecting to it in in a way that I am so grateful for because I feel like my mom left me this gift to be able to share with people and um, so I actually say that I collaborated with her in making this film so I'm you know she's uh, my partner my artistic partner in this and so I feel so great about that what does it mean to you that it got into Oxford to this festival and I think uh, a film festival that looks for the unique, the bold, the different. Yeah, I am so grateful because this festival also has an experimental block and um, this film is in experimental block because uh, the way it's made. Um, We used artificial intelligence. Um, Some of the pictures you see is making my mom's face move are from still pictures, but we used AI for that. Sand animation, I had a dancer, I have archival footage, I have so many different, it's mixed media, and which works for me to tell the story. And so the fact that there's an experimental block here, um, and it's my first experimental film ever. Like, I'm a traditional documentary filmmaker. I've always done, you know, traditional style docs, and I feel like this pushed me to try something new, and then Oxford recognizing that and appreciating it. I can't wait to show it. How has this process impacted you for how you will do your next, next, and next films? Oh, I'm open to trying new things now that, I mean, I've done the same thing so many times. I've directed like 10 feature length films. I mean, you know, I've been at this a long time (laughs) and um, I'm excited to explore some more of this style. I actually have some, uh, another audio tape left behind by um, my grand, he would be my grandfather, not my mom, but on my dad's side grandfather and it's something completely different than this and now I'm considering doing something with that and so maybe I'll end up doing two or three of these as as a series or something I don't know it's just something new for me so what gold do you have in like your attic your lost treasures you keep finding that's amazing I know and actually that I, I think it has to do with something my dad you know, my dad always like had like a home movie camera and he always was recording. Actually, this recording starts with him. It's not in the film, but it starts with him pushing the button and saying, testing, one, two, three, wow. testing. But he then he gave her the recorder and then she recorded, you know, along the way, where, wherever she want, wanted to when she was alone. But um, my dad was always doing stuff like that. So I think there are these little treasures and you know I carried this with me everywhere I went you know for 39 years I mean I it's like I can picture the drawers that it's been in and all that kind of stuff and it's like well there are treasures everywhere like this maybe um, since I started talking about the film some other friends have said I found a cassette tape you know by my mom my mom um, and I can't wait to listen to it now because you get made everyone keeps saying I'm brave I don't feel brave I feel like I'm going I'm going through my process of grieving now 40 years later and celebrating her life so I feel like this is giving us all a chance to say what other treasures do we have that aren't just pictures you know Mm. or old family films and the funny thing is there we have a zillion family films somewhere but I can't find them my brothers can't find them I don't know where they are the one clip uh, I have of old family film that I got transferred is in the 
the movie. So it's not rarely it, like I have I have n none of the traditional things that people need or think they need to make a film, and now I get to try new things, and that's fun. Wow. Um, yeah. Where I can hope you'll come see it. I'm I'm excited to. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Where can people find more information about the film, about your work? Sure. Um, so Judy's Thoughts Film. Dot com is the website um, and right now the trailer is on there if people are interested and we're you know just starting the festival circuit and um, we have some more f festivals coming up and screenings but I think ultimately this film will land in like some kind of training programs maybe for social workers and psychologists and doctors and things so they really can understand what people go through um, like I said it's kind of like a secret world so that we don't normally or a secret path that we don't normally go down so it may end up down that route eventually because I think that's what my mom would have wanted you know I think she didn't make this tape for no reason you know it wasn't just left for me or my brothers it's it's I feel like it's for something bigger so um, that's my mom's website Judy's thoughts Judy's thoughts film.com and then my website is frozen feet film um www.frozenfeetfilm.com where you can look up all the other films I've made shorts but mostly features um, and, but this one is my greatest joy actually and I really want to just say one thing that I did this in conjunction with my editor producer Igor Mayakotin who you know has just been my partner all along the way with this we started last summer and it took me this it took us this long to finish you know it's a we kept trying different things and you know different techniques and we I think we finally got there so that's why I'm excited to share it but Judy Sots film is not on my frozen feet film website yet it will be soon so well I definitely hope you continue along the festival circuit with it and uh, I hope you allow other documentary filmmakers to to lend their ear to how you did this it sounds amazing yeah it's been a, um, a really it's it's nice to talk about it actually because it's been just mostly you know my editor and producer and I and we're just like is this working is this working will people like this will they want I don't know it doesn't matter it's what I like no it's what you like no let's try this let's try that you know and ultimately you just hope it's the film that will touch people and that's what I like to do best thank you so much so for this. thank you mom